this is Michael from MMA Night and Day here to bring you guys the UFC 218 pre-card breakdown prediction blog real quick. Um, I'm not going to make this really long and extended. I'm just going to run through this really quickly because of the fact that there's no need to break it all down when tomorrow I'm just going to have to do it again right after and do a post blog. So we'll do the breakdown tomorrow. Right now I'm just going to run through this really quickly and give you guys the predictions. Uh, to start off the card, we have Felice Herrig and Courtney Casey. Um, Felice Herrig is actually ranked number 9 in the strawweight division. Courtney Casey's ranked number 11. Felice Herrig's 4-1 and one in their last 5. Courtney Casey's 3-2. and two. Uh, Felice Herrig, her only loss in her last 5 is actually Paige Van Zandt. I mean, she's been playing spoiler recently. Uh, she just beat Justine Kish back in, what is that, June? 25th of 2017 on the fight night, Kiesa and Lee. Before that, she beat Alexis Grasso. Alexa Grasso, she beat Caitlin Karen, who were two up-and-comers, and everybody was really hype on. Um, she beat Justine Kish by a decision and literally beat the shit out of her. <laughs> if you guys watched the fight, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, Courtney, she's on a uh, three-fight win streak currently. Courtney Casey's on a one-fight win streak. Uh, she has two losses in her last five to Claudia Gadelia and Suhi Ham. Our last win was Jessica Aguilar back in May, uh, where it was turned to a no contest and back to a win because of elevated testosterone levels, which then they found out that, you know, that wasn't the case and she was exonerated. But anyway, I'm going to go with Felice Harrig in this fight. I think Felice is going to win the fight. I think she has more than enough to win this fight. And I'm going to go with Felice Herrig. Next fight, you have David Tamer, who's 5-0 in his last five. His last win was Lando Venata back in two, UFC 209 with a fight at a night bonus. That was in March. He's going to be fighting Jakar Close, who's 4-0-1 in his last five. Uh, his last win was Mark DeCasey, which was a split decision, which was a crazy, crazy fight back in... July, July 7th, at the Ultimate Fighter Redemption card. Um, Jakar Close is on a three-fight win streak. David Tamer's won three of his last fights in the UFC. He's 5-0 in his last five, as I stated. Um, David Tamer's a really good striker. Uh, you know, he had a really, really fun fight. Like I said, a fight at a night bonus with Lando Venata, but I just think Jakar Close is going to I think he's going to be a little rough for him. I mean, I did say that with Lando as well, but either way, I'm going to go with your car close in this fight. <clears throat> Moving on, you got Alex Cowboy Oliveira and Yancey Medeiros. Uh, Alex Oliveira is 4 0 1 in his last five. Uh, his last fight was a cr crazy knockout over Ryan LaFair for a performance in a night bonus. That was on the UFC on Fox, Weidman and Gaslam back in July. Uh, He's 2-1-2 two, two in his last five, and, well, he's really, like I said, he's 4-0-1. Oh, it was 2-1-2, two, and two. what I'm saying is he won two, then he had one no contest, and then won the other two. The no contest was with Tim Means. Uh, that was a no contest over an illegal strike. Then they fought again, and he beat Tim Means, so he's really undefeated in his last five. Yancey Medeiros is 3-2. and two. His last win was over El Eric Silva back at UFC 212 in June. Um, his two losses in his last five was Francisco Trinaldo, which was a fight at a night bonus, and Dustin Poirier, which, had, which was at catch weight. Medeiros used to fight at lightweight. Uh, he was having trouble making the weight, so now he came up to 70, and he looks really good at that weight. Um, I'm going to go with Yancey Medeiros to win this fight. Uh, like I said, Alex Oliveira has looked good in his last five, but I think Yancey looks really good at 170, and I'm going to go with him to win that fight. No more explanation needed. Next fight is Charles Oliveira, who's had a really bad run in the UFC as of late. Um, and he's fighting Paulie Felder, Philly boy. Shout out to Philly. That's where I'm at right now. Lovely South Philadelphia. But anyway, Paulie Felder's at 4-1 in his last five. Um, his last win was a 
brutal, brutal knockout over Stevie Ray with elbows. Performance at a night bonus that was at the fight night Nelson Ponzinibbio in Scotland. Uh, his only loss in his last five was Francisco Trinaldo as well, and that was a TKO because of a doctor stoppage for a cut. But um, aside from that, uh, Paul, he's looked really good as of late. And Du Bronx is on a one-fight win streak. Uh, Paulie's on a two-fight win streak. Uh, Charles Oliveira's last win was Will Brooks. That might be the only guy in the UFC that had a worse run than Charles Oliveira as of late. Um, he won that fight by a rear naked choke. That was back in April for a performance in a night bonus. Uh, before that, he lost to Lamas. Uh, that was at a 155 catch weight. He was supposed to fight at 45. He came in 10 pounds over. Lamas still took that fight, and Lamas guillotined him, almost took his head off. Then before that, same thing happened with Anthony Pettis. They fought at 45. He actually made weight that time, surprisingly, and he was guillotined there as well. Um, before that, he beat Miles Jory, but that was at a catch weight at 150.5 because he couldn't make weight. And then right before that, he was TKO'd by the current champion, Max Holloway, at 145. He's now up at 155. He's fighting Paul Felder, and I think he's going to lose to Paul Felder. So I'm going to take Paul Felder, not just because he's from Philly. I don't care if he's from Wyoming. I think he would still win the fight. I think it's just going to be a little bit too much for Dubronx, and I think the Irish Dragon takes that fight. Now let's move on to the main card. We have Tisha Torres, the Tiny Tornado, which I don't think there is anybody in the UFC whose nickname suits them as well as uh, Tisha Torres does. That's exactly how she fights. Um, Tisha Torres is 9-1. Overall, she sits at number 5 in the strawweight division. Michelle Waterson is who she is fighting, the karate hottie, who's sitting at number 6. Tisha Torres is 4-1 and in her last 5. Uh, her last win was over Juliana Lima by rear naked choke. Um, that was back at the Ultimate Fighter Redemption in July. Uh, she got a performance in a night bonus by that. Her only loss in her last five is by Doug Rose. Doug Rose. Rose Namahue is the current champion. They've got a unanimous decision over Tisha Torres, but um, that's her only loss in her career. Uh, she's on a two-fight win streak as of right now. Michelle Waterson's three and two. Uh, she's two and one in the UFC. Michelle Waterson, uh, her last fight, she lost to Doug Rose. By rear naked choke, uh, the current champion Rose beat both of them. That was actually Michelle Waterson's last fight at UFC on Fox with uh, Demetrius Johnson and Wilson Hayes back in April. Her last win was Paige Van Zant by rear naked choke, and that was last year in uh, December. That was a performance in a night bonus. Um, I just think Tisha Torres is going to be a little bit too much for Michelle Waterson, and I think Tisha Torres continues that win streak. Um, to three straight wins, and I think she's going to beat Michelle Waterson. Um, next fight, another Philly boy. We got Eddie Alvarez fighting Justin Gagey, which they're saying this is going to be the violent heavyweight, well, excuse me, the violent championship of the world. Uh, Eddie Alvarez, last two fights, he had a no contest with Dustin Poirier and then was knocked out by Conor McGregor. Uh, prior to that, he rattled off three straight wins, which was a title win over... Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, he knocked RDA, well, TKO'd RDA. Uh, before that, he beat Gilbert Melendez, and then right before that, he beat Anthony Pettis. Um, Justin Gage, he's, on a, he's actually 18-0. He got one win in the UFC, but he's 5-0 in his last five, obviously. Um, his last win was over Michael Johnson, which he received a performance in a night bonus and a fight of the night bonus, which was a crazy, crazy fight. Justin Gagey, the highlight is what his nickname is, and that's exactly what that fight was. Um, this is going to be a crazy fight. It all depends on exactly what Eddie Alvarez shows up. Now, I don't think Eddie Alvarez should come in there with a crazy game plan and outthink himself like he's been doing recently, but I also don't think that he should come in there just trying to bang and move forward with Justin Gagey. Uh, if you look at prior... Fighters, I mean, Eddie Alvarez is starting to get a little older. Say, a la Chuck Liddell. Um, Chuck Liddell was knocked out by Rampage Jackson, then right after that was knocked out by Rashad Evans, then was knocked out by Shogun Hua, and then was knocked out by Rich Franklin, and then he rode into the sunset. Um, 
I think Eddie Alvarez could be on that same path if he tries to walk down uh, Justin Gagey and just thinks he's going to just walk straight towards him. I wouldn't go in there trying to wrestle him. Uh, Justin Gagey's an awesome wrestler from Northern Colorado. Also, he got mean leg kicks, so I think Eddie Alvarez has to fight this fight smart. But I think these are the fights that Eddie Alvarez shows up for. Uh, Justin Gagey's, you know, he was rocked twice in that Michael Johnson fight, even though it was an excellent fight. Um, he was still rocked twice there. He hasn't fought anywhere near the level of competition that Eddie Alvarez has, and he hasn't fought anybody close to Eddie Alvarez's level, aside from Michael Johnson, who I think Eddie Alvarez is a little better than. Um, Eddie Alvarez just, I think he's going to be a little bit too much for Gagey. As long as Eddie fights his fight and doesn't fight Justin's fight, I think, excuse me, I think he'll be fine here, so I'm going to go with Eddie Alvarez. Maybe I'm a little biased for the Philly hometown boy, but anyway, um, I think Eddie's going to win this fight, so I'm going to go with Eddie Alvarez. Next fight has title implications, I think. In my mind, it should. Uh, Henry Cejudo, who's actually ranked number two, and Sergio Pettis, who's ranked number four. Now, this is going to show what Sergio Pettis really is. He's either Sergio or he's Pettis, if you get my drift. Um, if he's a regular Pettis, then he's in danger because this is the worst possible matchup for him. Um, everybody knows you want to beat Anthony Pettis. You grab him, you throw him against the cage, you hold him there. If he tries to move, you put him on his back, and if he gets up, you put him back down again. And you just pound him the entire time that he's there. That's how you beat Anthony Pettis. That's basically the blueprint. That's what everybody's been doing to him, and it's been working just fine. Well, Henry Cejudo is an Olympic gold medalist at wrestling. If Sergio Pettis fights like his brother and tries to be a regular Pettis, calls himself Baby Pettis, so if you want to be a Baby Pettis, you're going to get put on your back and you're going to stay there. Uh, Henry, There's nobody else in that division that's better to do that to you than Henry Cejudo. Um, I don't think Henry Cejudo's... I don't think Demetrius Johnson has better wrestling than Henry Cejudo. I think he's a better fighter, obviously, but nobody in that division has wrestling like Henry Cejudo, and I think that Sergio Pettis is in trouble because of that. Uh, Henry Cejudo's 3-2 and two in his last five. His last fight, he KO'd Wilson Hayes um, and got a performance and a night bonus for that. Before that, prior to that, his two losses were Joe B by split decision, which I do think that he lost, and then he was TKO'd by Demetrius Johnson. Uh, Sergio Pettis is 4-1 and one in his last five. His last win was over Brandon Moreno back in August at UFC Fight Night Pettis Moreno. Um, his last loss was actually five fights ago, which was a TKO by uh, Ryan Benoit. But he's on a four-fight win streak. But either way, I still see Henry Cejudo taking that fight. Next, we have the co-main event, which is Alistair Overeem and Francis Ngannou. Uh, Alistair Overeem currently sits at number one. Ngannou sits at number four. And Dana White stated that whoever wins this fight will get a title shot. Um, Francis Ngannou is 5-0 and in his last five. His last fight, TKO'd Andre Arlovsky. That was back in January, though. It was a performance in a night bonus, and he hit Arlovsky, and Arlovsky got hit and was like, like, he looked like he was shaking. His head was in the air. He, it, they say Ngannou hits the hardest out of anybody. Um... I'm a little skeptical about that, but either way, he hits pretty hard. He hits really hard. So, Overeem, he's 4-1 in his last five. Fabricio Overdoom was his last fight, which he won by decision. Uh, my buddies think that Fabricio Overdoom won. I, however, do not. I think Overeem did win that fight. Uh, that was at UFC 213 back in July. Uh, prior to that, he beat Mark Hunt, and then he was knocked out by Stipe Miocic for the title right before that fight. Um, he did, however, drop Stipe. Uh, this is Ngannou's biggest test. Uh, Overeem does have the best striking that Ngannou's going to see. Uh, he's the most decorated heavyweight striker of all time. The only problem is when you're a striker, you want to throw punches, and I mean, I can understand if you were throwing punches with an Andre Arlovsky or you were throwing punches with Mark Hunt or somebody like that. I'm not saying Mark Hunt doesn't hit hard, but it's just 
Francis Ngannou has size. His arms are long. He's taller than you. Just and they say he hits harder than anybody in the world. And you've been knocked out plenty of times. So I think Francis Ngannou's going to catch him at least once in that fight. And I think Alistair Overeem will wake up tomorrow when I'm doing my post-fight breakdown. But anyway, yeah, I got Francis Ngannou winning that fight and going ahead and fighting Stipe Miocic. And finally, we get to the main event, which is Max Holloway versus Jose Aldo Jr. Uh, Holloway's 5-0 and in his last five. He's actually like 11-0 and in his last 11. Might even be 12. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Jose Aldo's 3-2 and in his last five. His last fight, he was actually knocked out by Max Holloway. The fight prior to that, he beat Frankie Edgar by decision at UFC 200. And prior to that, he was knocked out in 13 seconds by Conor McGregor. Max Holloway KO'd Aldo at UFC 212 to unify the titles and received the fight at a night bonus for that. Um, he unified the titles because Max Holloway beat Anthony Pettis and was given the interim title. Uh, Jose Aldo, when he beat Frankie Yeager, he was given the interim title. And then he was promoted to paper champ, excuse me, <laughs> unified champion. But anyway, Conor McGregor had to relinquish the title after he knocked out Eddie Alvarez. And once he did that, they had to have a new featherweight champion. So Jose Aldo was just given the belt, being as he beat Frankie Yeager. Um, Max Holloway beat Anthony Pettis and was given the interim title, which they fought to unify the titles. Max Holloway knocked him out in his hometown. And he's the current champion. I like Max Holloway. He's like a Hawaiian Diaz, man. That dude just likes to bang. Uh, he's tall. He's lanky. He slaps you like a Diaz. I mean, he's just... He's, he likes to bang. He likes to throw down. And... He got balls, man. Now, do I think Aldo could beat Holloway? Yes. Will Aldo beat Holloway? I... Don't know. I mean, Aldo's been... Did a month training with Robert Garcia at Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. Is that enough to make a difference? I believe so. Um, there's times that I learn a ton in a month at the gym. Uh, doing jiu-jitsu, I learned a ton of things in one month. I learned a ton of things boxing. I learned a ton of things in Muay Thai in one month. Um, the only problem is... Is his chin still there and is his mind still there? I mean, like I stated with Eddie Alvarez, eventually that chin will go. Um, can he withstand it? Uh, getting hit by Holloway, that remains to be seen. I mean, he has been knocked out twice in his last three fights. But I think that he does hit hard enough and he showed in that first Holloway fight in the first two rounds that he, I mean... He can do some damage. Just depends on whether he brings it tonight or not. Uh, I mean, I don't want to see Aldo win the fight because I want to see my boy Frankie Edgar get that title shot. I think if Aldo does win and beats Holloway, I do not see them giving Frankie a title shot. Um, Aldo's already beat him twice. So I do want to see Holloway win this fight. However, I think that I think I'm going to go with Aldo tonight, man. Yeah, I'm going to pick Jose Aldo to win this fight. Um, I think they will fight a third time down the road, and I think Holloway will beat him then. But I think for some reason, I don't know why, I even have Holloway circled here as to win the fight. But let me scratch that out. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Jose Aldo Jr. I just picked that on the fly. Uh he said his leg was hurt. That's why he wasn't throwing kicks. That remains to be seen. But nevertheless, uh, I'm going to go with Jose Aldo Jr. tonight. So there's my predictions. Um, tomorrow I will do a full breakdown and analysis of the card. Uh, I was going to do it prior to, but why do it prior to and then have to go right back and do it after as well. So... There's my breakdown of UFC, well, excuse me, my prediction of two, UFC 218. Like I said, tomorrow I will go ahead and do the full breakdown of the card, all the analysis, and give my opinion on the entire card overall. 
Um, please feel free to leave any comments you have in the comments section below. Also, if there's any questions, please feel free to leave that in the comments section below as well. Um, like and subscribe to the channel by pressing the subscribe button right underneath. Uh, also, if you'd like to receive notifications for any latest news and reviews, because this is a review channel as well, I review all types of combat sports gear, whether it comes to boxing gloves, shin pads, boxing boots, um, any coach's material, belly pads, mitts, doesn't matter. Headgear, anything that has to do with combat sports, I do review it. Um, so if there's anything that you guys would like to see me review, you can please leave that in the comment section as well. Uh, like I said, once again, like and subscribe to the channel uh, for more MMA insight, uh, fans' perspective to what's going on in MMA. Um, first episode is up now. There will be more to follow. After I do the breakdown tomorrow, there will be another video being released. If not on Monday, definitely on Tuesday. So anyway, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you guys later. Once again, this is Michael from MMA Night and Day, signing out. Goodbye.